but I was at the thrift store the other day and they had the absolute cutest little jelly jars that were vintage and beautiful and I didn't buy them because I thought what on earth am I gonna do with all these little cute jelly jars we already have too many glasses in our house and then I sat and I thought about them and I went back the next day and I scooped them up because I decided to make some absolutely beautiful beeswax candles so today I'm gonna to show you how you can take some really cute thrifted jars and turn them into beautiful beeswax candles. I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com where every single week I share stories about farming, family food, and fortitude here in our five acre homestead in Northern Minnesota. So beeswax candles are really great because they are beautiful just as they are with a golden rich color. They also smell wonderful without any sort of additives. They also are a relatively smokeless candle and they burn for a long time. So beeswax might be a little more on the pricey end of candle ingredients. It's definitely a lot more expensive than soy, but it's clean, it's pure, and if you tap into your local beekeeping community, you should hopefully be able to find some local beeswax. If not, I will have some links in the description box below to where you can buy some supplies for making your own candles out of thrifted containers. So aside from the beeswax, it's not that expensive. You do need some, not special equipment, it's not stuff that's hard to get, but if you're gonna be making candles, beeswax gets on everything and it's hard to get off of stuff. So you're gonna kinda of want some dedicated items or again, maybe just some thrifted items that you can use to make your candles. As you're gonna need whatever jars you wanna use. Measuring tape, we'll get to that in a little bit. You're gonna need your wicks. You can either make your own, which I'm gonna be doing here, or you can buy them so it's already all put together. And then you're gonna need, for this anyway, a pair of pliers to pinch the wicks together, some beeswax, and then you're also gonna need a double boiler like I have here. Get your wax melting right away, because it does take a little while for that to go. I would only use dedicated items like I said before. You're also gonna need a thermometer because we wanna make sure we pour the wax at the right time. Here I'm measuring the width of my jar to see what size wick I should use. You should use square wicks. I only have the flat wicks, but they'll still work. And here I'm just measuring down a quarter inch from the top of my jar, which is how high I'm gonna fill it. And here I'm measuring to up just a couple inches above my jar to know how long I should be cutting my wicks. So you can see here, I do have flat braid, even though you should be using a square braid wick, it works better with beeswax, but the flat braid uh, seems to work fine as well. So again, I'm having to assemble my wicks myself, but you can buy them pre-done. And you're gonna want the wick, like I was saying, to stick out a couple inches above the top of your jar because we are gonna be wrapping it around something like a popsicle stick or a pencil. But here you can see I am putting these together and just pulling the wicks through here and then pinching it off. And the wick ply or size you need is gonna vary depending on the size of your jar. Mine was two inches, so that's 15 ply. Check out the blog post to see what ply you should get for the, the width of your jar. Here the wax is hitting 170, not that you can see it, but once it hits 170 degrees, it's ready to pour and use. So I am priming my wick by dipping the whole thing into the wax. This will make the wax adhere to it better when we pour it in the jar, and it'll also help the candle burn better. So here I primed them all, laid them out in tin foil. It's a good thing to cover your area pretty thoroughly. And here now I am just dipping the bottom of this wick in there and then sticking it to the bottom using wax. You can also get wick stickers, but I find the wax holds it in there just as well and it's one less thing to buy and have around. After that, it's when it's secured well, you're gonna wrap it around popsicle stick or a pencil or something that is going to hold that wick steady. It should be nice and straight and centered in whatever jar you're pouring your candle into. Next comes the pour. Now, if you're gonna do this more often than just once or twice, I think it's worth the money to buy a pouring pitcher because it does get a little bit messy here, you see. I'm definitely not a professional candle maker. And as you can see as well, I am not going all the way up to the top. I'm leaving about a quarter inch or even a little more because you're gonna have to top these off. As the wax starts to cool here, you'll see right away, I'm gonna poke it with a toothpick that breaks up the surface tension and helps it kind of settle flat versus curved like would happen if you didn't break the tension. And then as the these cool you are going to see that there might be little holes and you just want to keep adding wax to the holes until they fill up to the top and then add one more pour over top so you have a smooth surface you'll definitely get some holes it's not to be worried about and here you want to trim the wick down to a quarter inch when you are done and that's about the right length for burning and there they are some beautiful candles you want to make sure they cure for seven to ten days before you burn them and that is it you have some beautiful 
homemade beeswax candles that smell amazing. They make great gifts, you can keep them for yourself. And then the other thing that's great too is after using candles, people can always keep the jars if they want to because of course these are absolutely adorable little jars. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you here next week for some more farming, family, food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.